I love unsubscribes because I think unsubscribes, for those of you who maintain an email list, just let you know that who's left on that list is like the juiciest orange juice concentrate of the people who are interested in what you're putting out there. They're choosing to be there. They're choosing to continue to engage. Which means, you know, you have a responsibility to really show up beautifully for them. Otherwise, they will unsubscribe, right? It's consistently for them. But I do think like I am totally down for an unsubscribe. I think that if you're not getting unsubscribed, you're not doing your job because you're not making a strong enough stance. Welcome to Too Legitimate to Quit, instantly actionable small business strategies with a pop culture spin. I am your host, Annie P. Ruggles, and boy, have I missed y'all these last couple weeks. Happy, happy, happy 2023. I have a wonderful interview for you today. So much truth, so much love, so much light. And my guest is the phenomenal Brian Pataka, or as my Chicago accent wants to say, Pataka. 20,000 creative people get Brian's newsletter delivered to their inboxes every single week. And when they're not reading along, they're listening to his podcast, Brian Breaks Character. The podcast ranks among the top 1% of most listened to podcasts in the world with 5,000 downloads every month and over 270 five-star reviews. Brian is the CEO of Team BKP. And for the past two decades, he's been helping creatives get what they want without all the suffering. His sweet spot is helping people who proudly walk the path least taken with down and dirty marketing and branding advice all while spilling the tea on how to bring home the bacon or Satan. He does live in L.A. But his secret superpower is his spiritual and grounding approach to the business rooted in his training as a non-denominational reverend. Read universe, God, Buddha, all of it. He proves that when you follow your purpose, instead of playing by a tired set of industry rules or limiting beliefs, you can skip the drama generate momentum and build excitement around who you are and what you love to do the mostest. Not only does he promise the how-tos, he has zero doubt that creativity is your divine birthright. Brian, I'm so glad to meet you. I'm so delighted that we're in each other's worlds now. You've already in our green room brought me so much glorious energy (laughs) and we haven't even gotten into your brilliance yet. So I'm so excited to get to ask you what do small business owners need to focus on this week? Revenue, revenue, revenue. Always, always, always. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes, please. Yeah. And I feel like I'm giving myself this reminder because, and I'm sure that your listeners will- uh, I mean, I I can use the reminder thing. I I think we will all see us. We can get into, for those of us who have businesses and have teams and we are- trying to make a social impact at the same time. And we're also trying to, uh, I'm a very service related business. So it's very much responding to people when they can't make their credit card payment or Brian, this wasn't where I thought it was going to be. Or can we talk like all of that service piece of it can, I believe at times take a lot of the pie and we're missing like, oh yeah, remember our num- we need to make revenue because revenue is why we're going to be able to hire someone else to increase that service or do be- make more donations when it comes to what we want to do for Black Lives Matter. Like all of the things that yes. we are doing in terms of our work is- so answered by revenue, I would say. Now, this is not to say that I'm like a, I, and you, if anyone saw this, like, wow, I'm surprised Brian said that. It's actually what I think they would say. But because I'm, you know, we're at the end, we're recording this at the end of a year on the cusp of the next one. And this is the conversation I just had yeah. with like my director of operations. And we were, I was like, listen, we need to be really careful because we can get in the weeds and it's kind of fun to worry about the funnel and look yes. at things and what is our, and of course we're growing our list and we're doing all those things. And so we need to remember like, yes, and we need to go live on that launch on this date because that is when people are purchasing this kind of thing and that's when we'll have the most conversion. So we have to be careful, I think, by, uh, I think sometimes, you know, in my business particularly, we have a very high standard around, we have, one of our values is called be extra. Yeah. And be, and the be extra is to always over deliver when we're communicating with someone. And the other is, is about humanity. We, yeah. we call it don't smack the wound. We call it that don't smack the wound. So that means if someone knows that, if, someone, if you owe somebody five bucks, yeah, uh, they know 
or no, if you know, if someone owes you five bucks, they know they owe you they five bucks. You need to remind them, right, right. So we always say like, if somebody has misstepped or done something wrong or like their credit card didn't go through, they already probably beaten themselves enough. enough. You don't need to add to that. Our job right. is to just be such a nice, soft landing place to solve the issue. And that kind of service can get in the way of the big picture of, okay, we're growing the business to serve more people and to serve them at a higher, more better level all the time. And so I think that's a, that's like, that's my reminder to myself this week. I'd say. I love it. Thank you for sharing it with all of us because it is critical in that you made a damn good point. Marketing is shiny and essential in its own way. Yeah. But but revenue is not only the lifeblood of your business, it's what sustains you and your team. And makes your marketing better. Like I want to make, I want to spend more money on pretty graphics and I want to not do the, do- I don't want to design this one myself this time. Oh like, my God. Not- <laughs> my dad, hi dad, who is like the number one fan of this podcast, just did this the other day. We just celebrated the two year uh, birthday of this podcast. Uh, hand Congratulations. Thank you. And I went on Fiverr and hired somebody to make me a most mosaic video because I didn't want to do it myself and I wanted to showcase my guests and the pop culture pieces and this and that. My dad, who observes everything I do and loves it (laughs) unilaterally, calls me. He's like, this is the best thing you've ever done. You're a genius. I'm like, dad, I paid someone on Fiverr a hundred bucks to do it for me. Right. But like (laughs) if I didn't have revenue coming in, I would have had to spend three times as long to do something that would have wound up a crappy facsimile of what I paid a hundred bucks late. to somebody else too. Yes, and very late. Like we'd maybe yeah. be celebrating the third birthday and not the second <laughs> birthday, right? But it's so funny that like that little bit of extra marketing sparkle really can work, but you got to be able to reinvest in that within a boundary, right? What I always did in the lesser successful or damn near almost out of business versions of my business is if I made a little money, I would reinvest all of it on marketing. Mm-hmm. Because I kept thinking, and the whole reason the non sleazy Sales Academy exists is I kept thinking, if I am extra and I show up extra, it'll carry me over the line of sales. No. Mm. It'll establish me as a really amazing provider that nobody pays, right? And so for me, I have to focus on revenue. If I'm not receiving and giving simultaneously, then I'm not a business. I'm a charity that hasn't taken time to incorporate and then would have to fundraise. Right. So like, I think that that's so key, especially because you're like, I need this reminder myself. Hell yeah. Yeah. And also, I think that it's interesting. I want to make sure like inflation is a real thing. Perhaps a recession is a real thing. We're all dealing with that piece of it. But it reminds me a little bit of, you know, we talk a lot about gas price. Uh, be gas prices because as they're going up, everyone is affected. Essentially, if you have an electric car, everyone is affected by it. Let's just go with right. that idea for a moment. And even right? so, your providers are dealing with the cost of gas, so your goods are going to be more expensive. So, but what I want to think about is when we relate that to the way we relate to our business sometimes, we're talking about like, oh, we need to get a jot form account for the surveys that we're sending out. And we're talking about whether or not we're going to pay $10 a month for the jot form account. And like, we're having a serious conversation. I go, pause for the cause. If one person signs up for our program, JotForm will be paid for for three years. Why are we still having this conversation? Buy JotForm and focus on revenue. Like the conversation we have around the coupons in the in the and the subscription stuff that we do in our business is to me, it, I can so get sucked in. And I think it's part of our personal lives. Like that's a place where we actually in our personal lives try to do better. But when it comes to the business, we have to think of it so differently because. If you get I'm, Emily on my team, will, she'll she'll laugh at this. She'll just like, you know, it's this much versus this. And I go, oh great, Emily, pick the one that's going to help you the most, because and then get one sale, and then get us one sale, because it'll pay yeah. for it for three years. Get us one so, sale to cover yeah. that job for him for three years. Also, pause for the cause might be the best phrase I've ever heard. Where did that come from? <laughs> so my dear, dear, dear friend Nicole Dalton, she is a therapist, and I think it's something she used in her therapy work when like someone will be talking. She goes, "Oh, pause for the cause," because she needs to get into what is the backstory there. So I use it all the time. Okay, <laughs> that is Gina. Yes, genius stuff. I was like, I was about to flip out. Like, pause for the cause. Like, let's get out of the weeds here. Right. Like my friend Jen Koken calls this prairie dog thinking. We're like prairie dog is survival mode. We need to have our eyeballs on what's immediately ahead of us so we don't get eaten or smushed. Right. But we can't operate a business from prairie dog thinking all the time. It it limits our view too much. Right. So getting in the weeds of it's a ten dollar a month subscription. Can we swing that is not 
actually asking the right question, which is, will this bring in new business and will this serve our clients better? Then we can justify any cost, right? Well, like and, to your point, and, go get one sale. And the other thing that I think it justifies is, and I want to, this is really important to me. So we have another value in my team. It's called all boats, which is a rising tide lifts all boats. So we say all boats all the time. So we will hashtag all boats in our Slack channel all the time when it. someone will say, Hey, I'm going to the doctors for the next two hours. I'm going to be out all boats, meaning like I'm not going to be around and I know that's going to def the team's going to be at a loss for a little bit. Like it's very, we're very sweet about it, but that's an all boats moment when we're like, well, the job form that's like the free one will help us, but then I'll have to do this extra manual action to be able to get that information transferred to that. I go, whoa, 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 the all boats value here would be, we pay for the one that's going to take it off your plate because you're going to be able to put your mind and your work in other places. So again, th- again, we're running towards revenue to support those really important values. Well, and also- right? There's a really incredible undercurrent here that's also true, which is we pay for things that solve problems. And I feel like we also sometimes in our marketing get away from the problem we're solving into some of the forms and features and functionalities of, well, platform has this and job form has that. Like, (laughs) solve a problem, yo. Like, you will do something that will make your team's life easier because it makes their job better. It makes the company more efficient. It makes all of you happier. All boats. Love all boats. Totally agree. I love what you said about marketing too, because I think it can be tricky. And I'm sure you talk about this is when we're talking about marketing, like so many people, this is the language I'm stealing from my coach, which is we want to know about Hawaii. We don't know about the plane that gets us there. Yeah. It's all about the destination. Just tell us about the the journey. Like, so you need to know, like, sure, there's six calls or there's eight weeks or this much. This is how much time you get. You need to know that. But I'm not buying that. I'm buying the result. Right. And so and I think that's such an important part of what you just nailed around this is like this is another way to bring your marketing mindset to the revenue into the where you're deciding to spend your resources for lack of a better word. Because we can't just spin out on story. You're talking about result. Right. And story is one way. Storytelling is one way to illuminate a result. Totally. The delivery is important as a detail, but most people aren't going to base on the fact that it's six calls or eight calls or seven calls or the calls are 90 minutes. Right. Like they, they don't get that into the weeds, but then they're all like, okay, well, hold on. From an energetic standpoint, can I fit 90 more minutes of coaching totally. into my week? Then we yes. care, right? But yes. then again, we're looking at process and result. We're not actually looking at, oh, it's a 90 minute call and I really only want a 45 minutes call. It's can I fit this into my freaking life? Yes. Is this going to get also- me from point A to point B? But I do think also, and you tell me if you agree with this, I think there's some people who are, I like to call them the list makers, who literally like, they are the people who they want the details. And for them, that's going to let them know they're a yes. But I think most people are driving towards like, what is the result? Am I going to get this result from what you're offering here, right? Well, and everybody in certain situations, I call them the four buyer types. and, And we all are capable of all four. And so I think you're totally right in terms of like verification or comparison shopping. We look for different details. If we have a different divider or divider, if we have a different decider, if you need to take it home to your man, if I need to take it home to my man, we could say like, how do they think differently than they do? What are the criteria that they're looking at? That's different. But so many times marketing is just this way of like putting glitter on stuff. And I love glitter. I sure. love glitter. I'm a musical theater degree person. Like, uh-huh. I love me some glitter. I love me some tap shoes. But at the end of the day, I need to get out here and say, and my glitter and tap shoes are going to provide this end game for you in the following ways. And if I can't communicate that, not only am I not going to sell that, I'm not going to be able to hold myself accountable to delivering what I promise to deliver because I'm delivering air. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things you just said is something that I really believe about sales. And I'm taking the conversation a little bit different here because I want to see what your answer is to this. I'm, I'm reversing the roles here. I'm asking you questions. I love it. So I love it. Right, You're so, welcome. Yes. Uh, it's now featuring me. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I really believe that a sales, a sales funnel is meant to help someone make a decision. Let me say this a different way. So what I mean is for us, for my business, we have a very like, if you are not for us, please unsubscribe. Please go away. Do not let my emails, which might make you feel good, I put in quotes, or feel like you're doing something. Because sometimes when you read something, you feel like you did something. Do not allow me to add to the noise of you not getting something done. Walk right. away from me and find somebody else. So I think I that my job- I don't want people to procrastinate yeah. with me. I yes. want people to do. Right. And so part of what I have about this is like, so my job is to create a position where you are forced to make a decision almost. So what I think about that is like, if you think I was- my 
uh, my coach told this story once. I think it's so good. Any big decision or price you've ever bought in your life, you've thought about, like you bought a house, you bought a car, you bought that $300 jacket that you're like, that's a lot for me to spend on a jacket, whatever. Yep. You thought about it for a minute. Maybe you walked away from it, you came back. And that tension you feel over should I or shouldn't I, that is my job to create as a good coach. So you are at, I believe, not slimed into saying yes, but put into the crucible of it is my choice to decide how I'm going to shop for myself right now. This mm-hmm. is an option that I believe will work. Do I want to? Do I want to do it now? It's a different question than I want to buy this, don't I want to buy it? It's a very different, like, and then that way that person can walk away and go, I said no to that knowing it could work for me. Or I said no to that knowing that I'm going to go somewhere else. Or I said no to that because I can't even think about it because I've got so much resistance coming up right now. It's scary to say yes, which is yeah. a person that I'm going to nurture for a while because hopefully you're going to yep. at some point say, yes, I am able to do this, right? So I think that that, that, that tension is what's meant to be created by marketing. And I, and you know, there's two different ways that I think about this is that there's nurturing when I'm like, just giving you love through my email or through my Instagram or whatever. And then there's actually a sales process when you've engaged with some kind of piece of content where we're actually like, this is a free training and you're inter- we know that you're interested in, my clients are mostly actors. So we know that you're interested in getting more auditions. We know that you're interested in getting an agent. So we're going to help you make that decision or give you more information about how this can help you and give you some stories and social proof and all those things. So I just think that in both of those ways, this is the part where I think marketing can feel boring. And I think it's so important that you get a little not that you get a little bit bored, but let me f- let me finish this thought. You should be saying about the same thing all the time, like five different things all the time. Because to you, it's boring, but people need to hear it again and again and again. Like, that's this is what you do. This is what you service. How many times have we all seen the same, like, new versions of the same stuff? How many millions of times has Hamlet been produced, <laughs> yes. right? I mean, we had Ethan Hawke walk around a blockbuster. Like, it, it's, it's been done. That doesn't yes. mean it's been done to death. We're still finding ways to do it. And in ourselves, we're still refining. I love that most of your clients are actors. That's my background. If closing night, your performance is the exact same as it was on opening or heaven forbid previews, you've been a very lazy actor and you probably haven't had a whole lot of enjoyment. I'm not saying if your character has totally changed, if you're getting a sitcom or something, it can't, you got to be consistent, but like you should also evolve your performances. If you're giving the same line reads in November that you gave the previous February, we got a problem. But, but I mean, I just want to make sure this is clear, but I still think I need to know what, you bring to the table. And yeah, no, we, no but say, your yeah, greatest yeah, yeah, hits, yeah. you can play in them. There's room to play yes. in your greatest hits, right? Like what I just wrote down when you were talking about this idea of, of people being guided through decision-making in terms of the funnel, I wrote down, it's not arm twisting, it's hand holding. I've never said that before. I'll say it again. I talk about arm twisting all damn day. I've never yeah. put the two concepts together before. There's room to play in your greatest hits. Right. And so, you know, I've been on hundreds of podcasts. I know you have, too. We say the same stuff, but we say it differently in these minute ways because who we're saying or the context or like you showed up on this show. This is the conversation I just had with my head of staff. And this is what's going on internally. We need to focus on revenue. I'm bringing that today. How you talk about with revenue with me is going to show yeah. up differently than how you talk about revenue with other people. You're totally. still talking about revenue. Yes, revenue. Yes, 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 yes. Right? You're still and talking about that. I remember this one, I was, uh, this a colleague of mine, she would say like, if you suddenly have like a, an opt-in that's like, here's your financial planner and you're like not a financial person at all, it's like someone going to the hardware store and trying to buy an orange juice. Right. You can't buy, we're like, why am I, he- I'm, why am I buying me. the why wrong thing? Why do you have orange thing? juice here? I'm, con- why do you have orange juice in your store? I'm, I yep. thought you were this. And like, so this, the, this ability to like change the story, but stay in your, like your categories. Right. I say like, we have like, I would say in our, in our business, we say like, we've got these like 12 nurture themes that we're yeah. always hitting on. And we're just telling different stories around these 12 different themes over and over and over again. And so that the person who didn't feel seen from the first time when they saw something like, oh, I kind of like this. It's not quite me yet. We'll continue to see themselves in a different version of that marketing or see themselves and yes. understand what it is that we offer by telling a different story or using a different way or like the list maker yes. version or the whatever. Right. Right. So that's right. By augmenting it in these different ways. I think that that's just so, so freaking critical because we don't know how many impressions it takes. How many times do you have to listen to a song before you know every word? It depends on the song. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? Like it no, depends no Nicki on Nicki Minaj. Song. Like 300 times if you try to do Nicki, she talks too fast. Yeah, she talks too fast, right? <laughs> I'll but never like, get there. <laughs> but for some reason, like David Diggs's choruses of Hamilton, I learned instantaneously and I've never been able to rap before. So like it, it right, yeah. right? We don't know. But yeah. then I think you also made this other thing of like when people resonate, it may take a couple times or it might instantaneously be a no. You had said before, you know, if your emails are too nurturing, it turns people off. Like, right. Well, I'm going to be mindful. That turns them off. But what I mean is, I want to be clear here. I think that if I want someone to leave, yeah, I want you to unsubscribe. Yeah. I do not want to be, you know how we get in our email, we like delete the five emails every day. Like these are the five yeah. emails I don't care about, whatever. Or like sometimes I'll read them, sometimes I don't, right? Yeah. I really don't want to be that person. No. I want I want you to like literally love what I'm putting out. Or unsubscribe and go to find another person who will serve what it is you actually go want. find your people. Yeah, instead of being on instead of being on my list, right? Yeah, don't hang and out so with I'm me a, for a minute. I like years. love unsubscribes. I'll just say I I love unsubscribes because I think unsubscribes for those of you who maintain an email list just let you know that who's left on that list is like the juiciest orange juice concentrate of the people who are interested in what you're putting out there. They're choosing to be there. They're choosing to continue to engage. Which means, you know, you have a responsibility to really show up beautifully for them. Otherwise, they will unsubscribe, right? It's consistently for them. But I do think, like, I am totally down for an unsubscribe. I think that if you're not getting unsubscribed, you're not doing your job because you're not making a strong enough stance. <laughs> Somebody should be pissed off when they get your email. Somebody should say, that's wrong. And the other person goes, whoa. Thank otherwise, God you're just milk toast, middle of the road. Yeah, otherwise, you're middle of the road and you're not going to pick up as many people. I mean, I feel like nothing has shown us the power of polarization or how deep it goes more than being and working with actors. There are people that will take a bullet swearing that an actor somebody else freaking loathes is mm. the greatest actor of our generation. And people will be like, are you insane? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I don't get it. I don't get the appeal. Or from a casting standpoint, right? I am five foot and curvy. I am never going to get cast as a rocket. I'm not. And they've done a lot with more inclusive. They've done a diversity campaign. They have a rocket with one fully formed, like functioning arm and one oh, not yeah, fully armed. Like they're doing more, but still they're not going to put a five foot fat girl in their kick line. They're just not. And that's okay. I'm like, I worried for you for, I feel like you might get kicked. I worried when you I described it. I was like, I, I'm like. They can kick over my head. I don't want to get a <laughs> concussion, right? But I always refer right. to myself as that great spot in the producers where he's dreaming about being a producer and he's auditioning the kick line girls. And he's like, yeah. you, 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 not you. I'm the not you girl. <laughs> I own that. OK, if I were going to be in the producers, little Miss Swedish up the skirt, up the ladder girl is not going to be me, nor are any of her leggy companions. If anything, I'm going to be a lady from Little Old Lady Land in that show or I'm going to be you, 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 not you. That's it. Right. Oh, so then God, it becomes, I love this do reference. I want to pursue being in the producers or not? Mm. Do I want to go? No, that's not a show for me. Or maybe I should try to do something else. But but if I try to get myself into the course of the producers, I could spend every marketing dollar campaigning that for forever. And the casting director is going to look at me for one second and go wrong body type. And I'm done. We do the mm. same thing in our marketing and for the better. There's a part of it of self-awareness. Who do I want to resonate yeah. with? What kind of work do I want? And who do I yes. not want to work with? I don't want to work with a whole bunch of MAGA homophobes. No interest. Yeah. <laughs> no interest. Totally. No yes. freaking interest. Totally. And so like, am I marketing myself as a liberal, queer owned business? No. But at the same point, that's how I show up in the world. And if people are going right. to see that and not like it, then bye. Yeah. Well, and also it's interesting you say that because so we have done certain times where we've uh, we'll do like a, I would call, I guess you would call this like our political statement or what mm -hmm. I would say. We're not a political, every business, I think every act you take is a political in some way, but yeah. in the email, and we'll having be like, a platform hey, is a privilege. Yeah. Right. So at 100 percent. And so we'll say like, hey, we're raising money for Black Lives Matter. We're matching everyone's donation mm -hmm. up until this amount. Da, 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 da. We do something like that. Right. And I will get, you know, nasty email responses from that from some people. And I go, oh, my gosh, thank God you've revealed yourself yeah. because I'm glad that you figured out that I'm not your person. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. I guess you're entitled to your opinion that I completely disagree with. Mm -hmm. But please don't. I, I don't want to, my, my goal is not to serve you. I'm not going right? to give and you so, a space in my masterclass. I'm not going to spend 
money trying to interrupt your Facebook feed. You're not my people and I'm not your people. Yeah. So let's just go. Right. And so, and, and I'm used this only as I use this because I think it's a stark uh, example here. Mm -hmm. It can also be like, I'm a non-denominational reverend. So I right. will use God, Oprah, Buddha, op uh, all the words, all yep. the God words, universe yep. in any of my languaging. And I'll say that very clearly. And, and if someone isn't vibing with that, perfect. Mm -hmm. Please don't stick around because you're going to get a lot of that if you stick yeah. around with the work unapologetically. Do, right? right. Yeah. Because yeah, that's yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's you delivering you. Right. And you're not saying if they don't use my exact terminology, you're saying I use all the words. Yes. And I yes. make sure that people understand that their words are their own. But if they don't like the fact that I'm going to use multiple words for something that they have one word for, then they can go elsewhere. Right? Or if they don't even have any word, if they're like, I don't believe in any of that stuff, then maybe you're not my Then maybe you're not right? the right, right people yeah. or maybe you're there because you're curious, right? Like that happens yeah. all the time where I have people that are dyed in the wool atheists who get religious clients right and left because they're like, I feel like I'm not thinking holistically mm. in these other ways or vice versa. Right. So yeah. the other stuff can happen as well, but it's not like, Ooh, I hate that. Ooh, that's not yeah. for me. It's not that pukey, violent push away feeling. Um, right. that like right, I get right, when right. I watched Dear Evan Hansen, you know, like me. <laughs> you didn't like Dear Evan Hansen. I don't like the story of it. I like lie. And like, I don't, I don't get the moral. And well, he I doesn't get like redeemed at the end. Well, yeah. He just gets like, a, just, you like, didn't do a great thing. You didn't do a good job, which is like fine. <laughs> but like we wrote a whole musical about a kid. Uh, you feel like a, you feel like a musical is living on a lie. Like the foundation of the musical is a lie. I don't feel like it makes enough of a statement to then say like these are toxic people behaving toxically. Like, you know what I mean? Like we either mm. have good people behaving well and having trouble with that. We have bad people redeeming themselves or we have mixed people having a complicated experience. And I don't mm -hmm. see any of those things in that. I just gotcha. see like the, I mean, teenagers being morons, which being I, morons. I could see if I looked out my own window. Uh, right. I mean, I do. <laughs> I think that the store I like the mother son journey in Evan Hansen for those. See, yeah. but this is exactly what we're talking about. I hate that show. Capital H hate. And you're like, but I like this one aspect of it. Great. We're both right. I'll stay on the mailing list and you will unsubscribe. <laughs> right. You'll you'll get your season tickets and I won't. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll find someone else to take my Broadway and Chicago subscription that week. Like, it's fine. Yeah. We can yeah. coexist. Right. But <laughs> but even just what you resonate with matters and what you resonate with as a provider, what you, Brian and me, Annie, resonates with or what repels us is important. I see people all the time focusing in their marketing about like, well, what are they going to want to receive? What are they need? What do they need to hear from me? And but I feel like so many times what I do in my work is I take you to your competitors websites and I say, agree or disagree line by line, agree or disagree. Are they right? Do we amplify this or do we argue this? Not that we're going to make their website, you know, we're going to lift their website and recreate it right. with their own data, but we're going to say, look, they're making some interesting points here. Do you agree with these points? Do you disagree with these points? Do you agree with the tone? Do you agree with the way that they're talking to people? Do you agree with the formality they're using, the language they're using, the images they're using? Do you like how this is being presented? Because so often we're trying to do marketing based on best practices for engagement, but not on what really is resonant for us. So we get bored in our own marketing. Yeah. And I, what I hear you saying so clear because is some people might not be clear on the stance they're taking yet. They may be able to articulate some of it, but not, I know who I want to work with. I don't know. And then like, okay, but have you asked this question before? And so what I hear is that when you're looking at a competitor's website, great. We're just using this as the starting point to say, here's someone's point of view. Let's agree and not disagree. So you can see, let's name your point of view even more clearly. Right. And so one right. of the things I'll say in my business is because my work is based on spiritual principles, I'm marketing a class. that's like how to get an agent with actors. Right. Mm -hmm. What they don't know till they are in there is like, and it is fully embedded with spiritual principles of why you're going to get one. And, I, uh, and my heart's belief is that that is why it works and why they meet with better match agents. You know, I say a flaw of this program, if I can just share, is that it usually attracts the more compassionate managers and agents because of the way it's created. And I think that's inherently why the spiritual part bleeds through of it, right? Yeah. But what's what's? But they're not coming to me to say, I want to go to church, right? They're coming to say, yeah. I want an agent. Yeah. And it took me a long time to understand that my stance around spirituality and kindness can be in anything that I create. Yeah. And I believe that is why people continue to come back is because they feel, 
I mean, this is a little bit inside of my marketing world a little here, mm-hmm. but I think that part of why they enjoy being in one of my programs is they feel good about themselves. Yeah in a new way about putting themselves out in the world because they're reassured spiritually in some way. Yes, and we remember how people are treated. We remember yes. how people treat us, right? That is that is not new to us. That is not new to marketing. But like you see that on a marketing business and spiritual level. People feel spiritually seen, safe, and supported with you simultaneously while they feel challenged and and like they're growing with your assistance and under your care, right? Like, right. People... That's my dream. What you just said is my dream that every single person does, right? And yeah. That's that's why I, that now that brings me back to why revenue is so important because there is a person on my team whose full time job is to make sure every single person feels seen when they're not on a live call with me, right? Because yeah. there's gonna be times when they're on a call and I'm gonna be with them, but that's their full time job. There's no way I could afford that person if, if you're I not didn't drive making towards... any yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. Right. A right. zillion, billion, trillion, zillion, gajillion zillion billion billion right like and 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 our lensing matters and our enjoyment of our work matters like I've had so many important conversations on this show this year a common theme I did not expect is joy founder Mm. joy provider joy not just client customer joy not just prospect joy right I wrote a novella this year that I wanted to read Mm. And marketing it now is joyful for me. You bringing the spiritual element of your life, your work, and your identity into your life, your work, and identity is pleasurable for you, at least most of the time, right? Sometimes I'm sure it's painful. It could be challenging. Sometimes the challenge, the boundaries, and all of that stuff, right? But like, people don't pay me because I'm a Muppet, but it sure helps. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, one thing you just said is so important because this is one of my foundational beliefs. This is for those of you who are, uh, inclined to know things spiritual. This is kind of an Ignatian way of seeing the world, which is that uh, the belief that the universe, God, whatever, plants your desires inside of you. And so that's how the universe self-organizes. So that by me being drawn to being an actor when I was an actor is why I had the training as an actor to be able to do what I'm doing now, which is why I live in Pasadena, which is why I met that person, which is why I go to that Starbucks and say hello. And when like, and when I got my headshot, like like all of the connections are built out of this desire that's pulling you kind of forward, right? That's why people believe in their calling or whatever. And so what you're saying is if you're and this is not to sound reductive or Pollyanna. I'm going to be mindful here because there are days when business is hard. But if you're not finding the delight in your business, there's a chance that something needs to shift. Whether How are you going to sustain the yeah, yeah. All, the, all the all boats times? To use your phrase. But wait, like, but, uh, but I don't want to just be really clear because I want to fight the other side of this argument. Like I know for a fact I'm about to go into two little launches and I'm like, and Brian, you're probably going to have to be up to like 11 o'clock a couple nights where you're not actually watching TV because you got to get some copy done. Like that's probably going to happen. And I'll feel that tension of like, oh, I wish I was watching TV with my partner. And I will also feel a swell of delight when that email goes into the world and people are responding to it, whether they sign up or not, right? So there's a little bit of, I think, this like ebb and flow of us To me, I relate to the way I relate to a launch and the way I relate to marketing is how I want to show up in the world. And I think that when I am selling, I am the most myself in all of my values because I am 100% not wanting you to don't enroll. Do not enroll if it's not for you. I'm going to be so explicit about what it is. And I'm going to be so using my values to help me explain to you why it's why I believe it is right and why you should in your own spiritual, powerful way decide if it is right for you. Yes. Not twist your arm. Like you said, there's no twisting your arm here. No, I'm like, let me hold your hand. Here's, let me show you all the way around the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, because like you said, you know, we got to help them make a decision through the funnel. That's what the funnel is for. The person at the beginning of the funnel and the person at the end of the funnel should not be the same person. Right? Great. Well said. Yeah, yeah. The, the audience Unless members, they're a looky-loo. Unless that's right, a looky-loo. Right, unless they're a like, looky-loo, yeah. right? But like, ideally, <laughs> we're helping them make a decision by proving value and getting them moving. Right? We're, or pissing them off. I'm okay if they're pissed, pissed off, off at the end. Oh, I'm yeah. so fucking pissed off. This guy taught me this way to do it. I don't believe it. And I've never, and now I have to think about that. I would love someone to leave a funnel being like, oh, I'm pissed. This it makes me mad. I'm not going to unsubscribe yet because it's done something to me, but it's, right. I'm mad that, yeah, right. I love that. Something's clicking. I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, that's the same thing. I mean, we could use a theater combo for there too. Is like, how many times have you seen a really compelling play that pissed you off? And it, it was almost activism. You're like, I hated yeah. this. I absolutely, completely hated this. I have no idea why I was here. This is the dumbest shit I could ever imagine. I'm so angry. These characters are horrible. And then you think about it a week later and you're like, that's the best play I've seen in two years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Or it moves something inside of you. Yes. 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 It, it called to you. Even if it, the part of you that it called to was a part that wanted to stay dormant or a part that doesn't get to come out and play very often or a part of you that needed some righteous anger. Like I read a yeah. really incredible book called The Change This Year that made me so mad and I needed that righteous anger. It's been a really mm, scary year for women identified people. Like it's mm-hmm. been real rough. And so I was yeah. real mad. And I read this book that made me even more mad. And it was like a cleanse. I was like, oh, thank you. You know, but <laughs> but at the time, if I had just based it on my own enjoyment or how quickly I had consumed it, I would have been like, God, that was garbage. No, it was amazing. Cause yeah. I needed that rage, right? But but to your point, yes, let your funnel in sight and act. Ec- site. It can't just be pretty words on a page that are designed to have people open emails. Opening emails are important. Unsubscribing is even more important. Yeah. Well, and what you just said is so important is like pretty words on a page. I think when you are not exactly taking a stance, when you haven't done that work, like you said to like, where do you stand opposed to your competitors or on your own, you've just come with sense. I think that you land in the general noise in someone's inbox. I'm like, oh, I like to read it sometimes. It's not leading me anywhere. Just like, oh, sometimes their thoughts are interesting. It's not getting, it's not me saying, I want to order that off the menu. Right. It's like falling into the, It's. It's. I think of it as this is, have you ever been to the Cheesecake Factory, everyone? It's the biggest menu in the history of the world. Like here is a yellow page. Does anyone even have a yellow page? Here's the phone book. There's a salad with 3000 calories in it. What? True. But wait, there's so many pages though. There's just oh, so yeah. many pages. And I feel like if you're the person who's like, just kind of like sharing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you're not making a stand. You are the cat. You're the menu at. You're the menu at Cheesecake Factory, but no one's hungry. You're a jukebox like no one's musical order. that no one asked for. Yes. Yes. Right. You're like, do yes. we need? Wait, this? Is, ain't you proud to beg any good? Have you seen it? I haven't, but I hope it's good because the music alone should be fantastic. And the music is. I want it to be so good. I yeah, mean, yeah. Jersey Boys wound up good, so yeah, so great. So it's not like they can't be done well, right? But it's like, did anybody ask for this? Am I putting out marketing that people are hungry for? Am I putting out stances and practicum that needs to be consumed? Am I bucking the status quo? Am I myth busting? Am I taking a stand? Am I using my platform and privilege for good, right? Am I saying, hey, people are paying attention to me. I'm going to fundraise for Black Lives Matter, whether or not I get some angry, bigoted emails. Right. Cool. I welcome yeah. the angry, bigoted emails. I don't want them. But also at the right. same point, I'd rather people go, ew, what? All lives matter. Police, blah, blah. And me being like, unsubscribe. Cool. Unsubscribe. <laughs> I unsubscribe from your reply unsubscribing to me. Like, okay. <laughs> right. And and so I think all of that is really, really important and, and really something that we we can't take personally, we can only double down on who we are, right? Like we can only double down on what's important to us and we can only double down on how we want to be seen. If you're getting typecast by your marketers or by your consumers as the wrong type of you, then only you can fix that, right? Like most of us don't have uh, performance agents in this way. Like I don't have somebody supervising me and saying, Annie, you're coming off a little soft here. Or Annie, this is a little too zany. I don't have that. I have to self edit. If I'm not being received correctly, it's on me and my team to fix it. Yeah. And what you just said is so important because I just thought of something that makes me so, so I had, I did a photo shoot at the beginning of this last year, I guess. Maybe it was even earlier than that. I'm really proud of the photo shoot. And here's why. When I first started doing it, I was like, oh, let's look at what photos I need. And here I am like looking like Amy Porterfield or are these coaches holding coffee cups. No offense to coffee, coaches holding coffee cups who are listening right now. So true. So like, and no like offense to coffee Sitting cups. in my be- beautiful kitchen and like, here's my laptop. And I was like, what the fuck is it? And I was like, this is not me. And then I was like talking to my photographer and talking to my stylist. I said, listen, this is the anti coffee cup photo shoot. There will be no lattes. There will be no laptops. There will be we no need to go the opposite laptops direction. And no. Lattes. Right. And it was like, and suddenly it was like, here, here's those, a red lips phone. And like all the things that is the part of my personality that is me and embracing it. What was so weird about it is it's gotten not weird, unsurprising to me and for no one else was of course, these photos are exactly what my, like they get the most engagement. They get that my audience is the most, because like, that's what they always knew about my personality, but I saw myself as something else. And so I had done this survey to kind of say, what colors do you see yes. when you think of me and that? And like, it really helped me be like, oh, here's me like dark woods and this like masculine mahogany, da, da, da. I'm like, this is so not the vibe of what it's like to hang out with me. And so it's very, it's been like a, 
freeing for me to embrace what people see in me. And it hasn't felt fake or inauthentic. It's just different than like the way I might place my house. I'm not putting purple and pink walls all over my living room. But when I'm doing my website, when people need to understand the kind of way it's going to feel when you're around me. That is the journey that I need to go on. That's so got that neon fabulous yeah. energy, right? Yeah. I yeah, mean, my yeah. most recent new headshots, my only real concern was like, is this too much boob for LinkedIn? <laughs> like that, seriously, like I shopped it to all of my like besties and business advisors of like all genders, all orientations. I was like, I just need, don't tell me the photo is good. Don't tell me you like it. The question I'm asking you is, is this too titty for LinkedIn? And <laughs> and what did they say? No. <laughs> no. And so now, you, you as a result, my boobs are all over LinkedIn. They're just, there they are. <laughs> But, you know, I people are like, no, it looks like you. It looks like a photo of you. You look really happy. You look right. really engaged in your work. And, like, I have these little bells that my little sales bells that I sent out to my clients. My new picture has the bell in it. That's what they're looking oh, for. Okay. You know, yes. and, and not for yeah. nothing on the one with the bell. The bell is covering my cleave. So it is a little bit more of a uh, G-rated brand photo <laughs> than my, right. like, I am a bitch on a throne looking like white Beyonce. <laughs> With my tits out right. on LinkedIn. Right? But like, Love they it. each their own. We yes. all, we are onions. We have layers. Yes. Right? Yes. So, but I think that's great too, is like, look at how your own lensing was self-limiting. You know what you didn't want. Yes. But you almost didn't want to allow yourself to want what you wanted until you gave yourself permission not to have a coffee mug. That's what I was talking about with the thing about competitors. Go to the competitor's website, look at the coffee mug pictures and make yourself some rules. I will never pose with a coffee mug. And if I do it candidly, we will say the only documented picture of Annie holding a mug. Like, okay. <laughs> right. right? Like, right. look, she yes. does drink things. But right. but we can create so much more of a brand guide, a style guide, a marketing guide, a customer service, you know, SOP, whatever, just by saying that's not for me. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And it was and, and what it was I, and what I realized afterwards is I had like some homophobic thoughts. That's why I was not there. Like I'd been trained to like, don't look gay. Don't look fun. Because if you look fun, you look gay. And if you look gay, you won't look smart. And if you're not smart, then people won't yeah. hire you. Yeah. And that is like, that's from, you know, Will and Grace was barely on TV when I was younger, right? right. So like, this was a different world that I was growing up in, I would say. And I can't say that that's well, journey no, but I mean, people but, today. But that right. was in the 90s before, you know, Just Jack. And yeah. Queer Eye and the original um, Queer as Folk and stuff like that. It very much was like in order to survive, you have to blend. Yeah. And you will. And I had written the story. You will not be successful if you are gay is the story I had written for myself. Right. right. I mean, and I have an and I am in a I am in a uh, hetero seeming marriage because I'm married to a, a cis man and I am a cis woman and whatever. Um, I'm queer, he's hetero, whatever, it doesn't matter. But like, I don't have to worry about that one. My version of that when it comes to stuff like the boobs and everything else is fat phobia, right? Like if I show below my shoulders, they're going to see that I'm not stick thin. Then in my brain, I go, they're going to think I'm lazy. They're going to think I'm sick. They're going to think I'm this. They're going to think I'm that. They're going to think I'm less than. no. That's my own internalized self fat phobia, right? So like what you said, which is so smart and so honest and so very true and, and loving toward yourself and gentle toward yourself. It's like I was having homo I was having homophobic thoughts about myself based yeah. on previous conditioning. This is why visibility is hard. We all carry this stuff. Right. Yes. People think that visibility being challenging is just vanity. No, it's self-protection. We have kept ourselves alive. You have learned how to behave like a straight man. And I have learned how to make my chin look like there's one of them, <laughs> you know, to, for good and for ill, because that's how we adapted to survive. But but now we got to look at that and be like, that is our thinking that we can use haters and unsubscribes to justify. Or we can say, this is me, this is us, this is how I do. You're gay, I'm chunky, people love us even more because of those things, not in spite of them. And if people don't want to hear about me talking about the murder of Mike Brown, they don't have to. Right, right, 
Right. And I think and I think what you said is so important for anyone who's listening, especially because we all pick up these stories and let's not forget that the culture perpetuates. Yeah. So our willingness to there is a courage in I think in a bravery in saying, I'm gonna try to embrace this part of me that I'm recognizing is uncomfortable and this and I think that that part is recognized by audiences in some unconscious level, right? And I, I had a coach who said this to me and I and I always stick with it is our audiences and our clients respond to our striving more than they respond to us getting it right. Yes. So 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 much opening up around like yes. I remember when we launched my podcast, we were sharing like Apple's annoying. This is how Apple works. And we would, this is what we're going to do to try to make it so we can break through and like literally be like, this is why we need you to help us out. And it worked really well to get our listeners and our subscribers up because we were like, this is not, we're trying to do this. We don't know right. if it's going to work. Very that. And not very like messy about it. Cause messy is, I don't know if this has worked. It was very, I'd done my homework, whatever. But I think that that your striving is in, in a way for a vulnerability for someone to get to know you better. Yeah. Kind of that we can always, yeah. I mean, even on this show, there are times when the pop culture piece, which we're about to transition to, works beautifully. And it's like, oh my God, this subject matter and that piece of pop culture are best friends for forever. Then I have had people like Mike Michalowicz on the show where he knew damn well we were going to talk about Revenge of the Nerds. He picked it. And then at the end, I go, okay, Mike, what does this have to do with Revenge of the Nerds? And he goes, oh, I don't know. Shit, let's make something up. Like, <laughs> the effort is interesting no matter what form yes. it takes the striving is interesting watching real people figure it out we don't yes. need everybody to be a tony robbins guru right now we just need our leaders to be a few steps ahead of us on our own learning curve so we know we're not walking in uncharted territory that's it Mm -hmm. and, it. and what's important, important and that the leaders are honest about their striving, I think is a part that has to be yes. there. So it can't be, I've got this all figured out, blah, 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 blah. Cause I'm not interested. I mean, at least that doesn't attract me. I mean, there oh. are people who guys who stand by their house with their 12 cars in the driveway and that's their marketing. Like, I know that's, yeah, but that's not someone. even their car. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that's I, we know that, but I'm saying it works. Somebody's someone's buying that. <laughs> I just watched a whole documentary about influencers where they literally have their friends like submerging them in kiddie pools and being like, hi from Bali. And I'm like, bitch, you in your driveway. <laughs> like, No, but anyway, oh my God, that's, but that's a perfect transition. Okay. So glossy, extravagant designer, living adventure, leveling up messy people. What yeah. does any of what we've talked about today have to do with freaking HBO sensation White Lotus, which full disclosure, you know, I haven't seen, but we'll binge seen. by the time the episode comes out. So Great. you're going to proceed, but you need to tell me as you tell the listeners, White Lotus, how does this connect? Let's see if I can make it. I'm going to build a Mike Malowitz, Mike Michalowicz, right? I'm not sure if I can make it connect, right? You got it. So that. here's where, here's where I, a couple of things is uh, the creator of White Lotus, Mike White, has said multiple times that, you know, he showed up to the hotel where they're going to shoot this thing. And he was like, it was going to be succession. And it was going to be about like people trying to da da And But he got there and he was like, oh, no, this is a story about sex. Because the setting felt like it was about sex. And it felt like it was about lust and the relationships around sex. Like the setting kind of fed the change there, right? Fed mm -hmm. to like, this needs to be about this, right? And so I think the way I'm not... We'll see if this connects at all. But here's what I take away from that. In a Great. Way. I'm Good enough. I'm taking specifically from Mike. I'm taking specifically from Mike White's, Mike White's description, mm -hmm. less from the show, but his description of creating the show. Mm -hmm. Every single time I've tried to make something in my business and I have said, we're going to launch this in March. And then it got launched in November or it got launched in the following March. It has been the best decision I ever made. Standing ovation, full clap. It has been more successful and no one freaking knows that you decided to, that you moved it besides you. And you may, I had some butt hurt around it. Oh, I have to get some disappointment for a day and a half. And then the moment I was like, oh, I'm doing this in November, the relief that showed up, the stamina that showed up to go in there and to make it mo better because now I've got this time was phenomenal. I'll say the program that I launched three years ago is the program that has helped my business really catapult and get bigger and grow a team and that I have the revenue that we wanted. I wanted to launch it a year earlier. Yes. So that had a whole year of cooking and incubating and making it mo better and thinking about it. And by the way, I launched in March of 2020, just so we're clear. Oh, what a great time to run a business. Yep. And it was mm -hmm. the biggest launch of my entire business, even so. Yeah. Uh, and so I will just, and so what I take away from is the, the, as a leader, your ability to say, I can adapt and I can change. I can adapt and I can change by the setting. And what I want to say, the reason I want to bring this into this, is where I'm landing the plane here is, 
You know how we have no control over the weather? I sometimes use the weather to think about spirituality because we have no control over the yeah, weather. We don't. So instead of it being about a relationship, like you did this wrong, I did this wrong, da, 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 let's figure out what's wrong, what's going on between us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say like, hey, the weather isn't looking good between us. I want to clean it up. Can we talk? Mm -hmm. is different than you did this, I did that. The weather yeah. is something we didn't have control over, right? Mm -hmm. And so part of what I liked about the way Mike White walked into this beautiful hotel in Italy is he's like, okay, we're gonna do this thing about succession. And Gather goes, oh, no, the weather here is telling me it should be about something else. And I am facile enough and trust myself enough and smart enough to say, I can make that adjustment. Yeah. I can make that adjustment. I don't have the answers yet, but I can make that adjustment. Well, and in the own, and so th your yeah. own story that you shared with us too, like, you set out to help actors get more agents, get more auditions, close more gigs, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you found out due to the weather and your own feeling and your own gestation. And and I love the words that you use, cooking and incubation. We're all just giant crockpots, people. Our ideas yeah. need time to cook. But you found out that because of your weather and you're giving yourself time to cook, if you're not bringing in the spiritual element, your work feels incomplete. You probably yes. didn't know that completely going in. I didn't know I was going to have to be so loud all the time. But you know what? <laughs> it's what it is. Like, I mean, that's like saying, Annie, the sky is blue. You're loud. Get into it. But I didn't know that. Like, yeah. I, I I, mean, the, the novella I came out with this has like a vague noir coat on top of it. It okay. started as a romance novel and I almost put it out as a romance novel. Then it became like a Stephen King horror thriller type. And I was like, this isn't working at all. And it evolved into a mix of like a sexy, scary, goofy, funny thing. And even so, I wasn't even fairly paying attention to the weather. I'm like, oh, it's a noir. And then I'm like, yeah, I put it out a noir about coaches with sales avoidance. And then people come to me and they're like, this is the most scathing thing about the toxic mentorship of the coaching industry. And I'm like, it is? <laughs> right? Because like Mike's also got to let White Lotus become what it becomes. What I know from the production of it is it was meant to be one season. And then they're like, wait, we have Jennifer Coolidge, who is freaking amazing. We can yeah. do more with her and we can do more with this, which is how we wind up with a second Sicilian season yeah. and soon to be a third season in God knows where. Right. So right. Mike, I think the, I think it's to be Asia. I think ooh, it's be Asia just but that. like yeah, Mike yeah, yeah. is watching the weather. He's walking. He's watching the weather. He's allowing things to evolve and he's not rushing them and also letting things end intentionally is the same thing as letting things start intentionally. If something needs to pivot, if something needs to grow, if something needs to change, we have to allow that to happen up to and including up to and including fucking up our own deadlines. Yeah. And when you said that, I think it's so important is like, and sometimes I know like you're like, I'll just say that that launch that I had in 2020, like it was the cart was going to close. Like we were not having lockdown at the beginning. It was like, maybe we're going to lock down. Who knows? By the time the cart was closing, it was like, and we are locked down. I was like, this is not what I thought we would be talking about. And so I like those emails towards the end had to change. I had to acknowledge, hey, who knows what the world's going to look like? But I know one thing is you're going to be stuck at home. Maybe this is a great time to do a course. I've never had more people enroll in my life. Right. And I have a video on I'm YouTube from March 13th, 2020. And I say, you guys, we got to prepare. They said we might be locked down for like six weeks. <laughs> video still on oh, YouTube. God. Maybe like, I'm going those... to get through the next six Ugh. weeks. I'm like, ha ha. I want the year back. I right? want my year I back. Three I really years want... back. My yeah. God. Yeah. Right. But even so, like that was the best I could do at that time. Cause based on the weather report that I had, the weather report yeah. that I had was six weeks of COVID. I put out a video to help people survive six weeks of COVID, which turned into three years of COVID. Like, <laughs> sure. But I can't yeah. beat myself yeah. up about doing my best at the time when I had it. No, striving. That's striving. Right. That's he didn't That's show up. Striving. He yeah. also didn't show up to your to your point. He didn't show up in Hawaii and be like, I'm going to let everything flow to me. I'm going to go in completely tabula rasa mm. and let the whole thing be inspired. He showed up with a cast. He showed yes. up with a treatment, right? He had puzzle mm -hmm. pieces. He just wasn't trying to force it all to be done while it was still baking. Right, right, right. Exactly. And I think that's part of, and so I think that would be the lesson that I think I take away from it. I mean, the rest of White Lotus says that there's a lot of not nice people on that show. So get ready to watch. And also it's super intriguing and wonderful. Um, and, but I think that that is the, that, that adaptability is why I think it, it really worked out. Adaptability. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Because while we're playing this song and dance of resonance, right, while we're showing up and experimenting with our own boundaries and how we want to show up and what roles we want to play that are authentic to us and how we want to really 
make ourselves publicly consumable in whatever way feels right to us, we still every now and then have to go, wait, hold on. I'm adapting. They're adapting. We're adapting together. We have to see where this goes. Or your team is pushing you to do something new and exciting and scary that they really believe in. And so you get to decide, you know what? I'm not going to drive the bus this time. That's adaptable. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. 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 And we, again, and that's when we get to respond to you. I just think that one thing, pe- uh, one thing that entrepreneurs can leave out, and I think this is a great way to kind of end things is you need to narrate what you're doing in your communications. Yes. So whether that's an Instagram or in an email, we're working on this right now. We're struggling with this right now. Yes. Cause if you're just putting, if you're just putting out the finished product, then we're not actually getting an entryway into you. And what did you say before that's so important about it? Where you said like, Show them that work. Show them that you growth. need to you need to narrate it and show us that you're striving. You're show narrating. Us the hey, striving. That's it. Yes. Yeah, show us the striving. Yeah. Show us the striving. Oh my God, I love it. Well, you. I hope today we have shown some serious striving. You have given me so much gold, so much good. I can't wait to watch White Lotus. Thank you for giving me an excuse to mention about seventy five thousand musicals in rapid succession. <laughs> I uh, love it. I mean, anytime I get an actor on the show, I'm just like, here we go. Old brain coming back out. But I got two more questions for you before I send you back to your day. Uh, The first one is you have been tasked with casting White Lotus the musical. Perfect. Okay. But you get to pull uh, from your own talent core. So your students that work with you and everything else. Okay. How would you tell them to get into the right mindset to land that audition for White Lotus the musical? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, who wrote the music? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh God, who would write the music for White Lotus? I feel like the set design. Like Jean T- Jenny Tesori or something. Yeah, or right? like Jason Robert Brown. I mean, like yeah, sure. yeah, it's some called, yes. some goofy last five, whatever. Or David Gettle. Oh yeah, the light of the Piazza guy. Like yes, that guy. Totally. We'll yes, all that's like that. that's it. He loves Italy. So yeah. yes, there you go. Um, how are they getting the mindset for it? I'd say like, uh, you need to go after what you want. And, uh, fiercely and nothing gets to get in your way. Get after it. It's it's fierce. Your objective is all you play. You want to get what you want. You will use every strategy you can to get there. You are heartless. Yes. You are Patty Lapone. Open the mouth and eat the world. Yes. Eat the yes. world. Yes. Yes. Oh, I totally. love yeah. it. And more Re- important. Feel, I, I would say don't be afraid to be don't be afraid to show the ugly side of wanting something. And if people are struggling to do any of those things. Show the ugly side, show the striving, especially if they're in uh, some kind of theatrical profession or if they're just not showing up completely. What is the best way for them to start a conversation with you and your team? Great. I think that I'll give you two roads. One is uh, my Instagram. I'm there all the time. It's Brian says that at Brian says that. Uh, and it's Brian with an I. Thank you so much. And my name is not Brain. People spell it wrong all the time. And I think I'm smart, but my name is Brian. I, I B-R-I-A-N, people. A-N, yes. Yes. Uh, and then if, if for the actors out there and for those of you who are interested in hearing different kinds of stories, uh, if you go to super sneaky auditions.com, we've compiled, I went in like a, I call it my like Sherlock Holmes mode. And I went out and I found weird routes that people got auditions and got gigs because I think sometimes we think of just like go to the open call, go right. to actors access, go to backstage. And I was like, there are other ways that people are getting auditions and I need you to know how they exist. And so it's a really fun and it's really pretty actually download that you can grab at super sneaky auditions.com. I mean, I'm just going to go. I I haven't been professionally acting in like 14 years. I'm just going to go grab it because I got to hear this shit. <laughs> I just can't wait. Good. Well, this Good. has been purely joyful, wonderful, and challenging in the best possible way. Thank you for sharing your pre-holiday week with me. Thank you for uh, bringing all this gorgeous energy and truth today. I surely do appreciate it. Thank you. So it was such a joy to be here and had so much fun with you. Really, really a lot of fun here. <gasps> Thanks. Yes. yes. Well, I'm going to ride high on the fun, y'all. I'll be back in just a second with my final thought and your homework for this week. Don't worry, non-actors. I'm not going to make you do a monologue. The rest of you, however, brush that shit up. Well, hey there. This was a long and glorious interview, so I'm going to keep your homework short and sweet. Quoting Brian. Three words. Show the striving. This 
week, your homework is to give people a different kind of insider behind the scenes look at your work. Go beyond the Instagram photos of your desk or post photos of your retreat. Put down the dang coffee mug and stop smizing at your webcam. We make our brilliance look easy, and that's impressive AF, but people love to know that effort went into things. Why else would we slap the word artisan on every freaking thing? And buyers like to know that your work is important to you, that they are more than just a number to you, that holding up your end of the bargain and in fact blowing their minds matters to you. How better than to ask for what you want, explain the stakes in a non-whiny, needy way, but in a positive, hey, help me make this amazing shit happen, okay, way. Show your art. Show your process. Let them know how you made a tough choice or recovered from a setback. Show them your logic. Get visible and vulnerable. It doesn't have to be raw, but it does need to be real. When I was in software, our office wall said, work is love made plain. So get out there and show folks just how much you love them. Hey, thanks for listening. If this episode kept you laughing and learning, I have two requests for you. First, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button, depending on your platform, so you never miss an episode. And also, more importantly, if you are looking for support, inspiration, networking, collaborations, or just a chance to hang out with me, Annie P. Ruggles, and our fantastic guests, make sure that you are a member of our LinkedIn community, The Legitimati. It is a weird and wonderful place. I can't even believe it's on LinkedIn, and we want you there. You'll find the link in the show notes. Big shout out, as always, to the fabulous dudes who helped me make this show. My producer and editor, Andrew Sims of Hypable Impact. My theme composer, Riley Horbacio. And my show art creator, Francois Vigneault. See you next time.